Hello, my friends. It's time for my Thursday thoughts. My name is Lainey, and on Thursdays, I usually talk about compulsive makeup purchasing or romantic woes, but I got sucked into the Katie Morton and Eugenia Cooney frenzy that blew up the internet last week. So with tremendous trepidation, I'm going to talk about it. First of all, I really have no desire whatsoever to participate in the conversation that goes something like, Katie's a hypocrite because she ordered the 5150. She didn't. She was just presenting options. A friend reached out to her and said, I am concerned about this person who has a potentially medically dangerous mental illness. She's not seeking treatment. What do I do? And Katie was just saying 5150 is one of the options. Now in Texas, we have have a 4800 and basically that's the same thing it just means involuntary commitment to a psychiatric facility so if you are hate watching this video because you want to yell that Katie's a hypocrite this is probably not the right video for you to be watching I don't live in California I used to I miss it I wish I still did but I currently live in Texas and I'm also a baby therapist I've never had to deal with a 4800 that's the Texas equivalent of a 51 150. I don't know the legality behind it. I'm not qualified to speak on it. So that is all I'm going to say about that. But I will say that I have watched both videos on Katie's channel. I adore adore her. I look up to her so, so much. I am a pre-licensed MFT, which means I have been through the graduate program. I have completed my internship, but I have not yet taken the national licensure exam. I'm so scared of it, but I will be taking it soon. So hopefully I will be an LMFTA in the very near future, but I am not an LMFT as Katie is. I also have a master's degree in psychology with emphasis on behavioral and cognitive neuroscience. I am a former psychology professor and just an all-around psych nerd. So I find these topics extremely interesting whether or not they are surrounded by internet drama. Eugenia is someone I found more recently, but I find her so likable and so strong. Can you imagine dealing with all of the internet bullshit on top of whatever she is dealing with in her personal life? And we don't know exactly what she is dealing with in her personal life, and it's not our place to ask. So I'm not going to pick apart any of the three videos frame by frame. I'm not going to perseverate on a single sentence or a single word. I'm just here to talk about how I reacted as a mental health professional and on a personal level. So the first thing that really struck a chord with me was something that Eugenia said about talking to your friend who maybe has a disorder about nothing but that disorder. Why can't you just hang out and be a friend? Sometimes people who are dealing with shit, be it a mental illness or a physical illness or a personal tragedy, are sick of talking about it. Sometimes the best thing you can do for your friend is just hang out with them and be normal. Talk about boys, talk about movies, talk about your job, talk about fun things. Don't talk about the issue if they don't want to talk about it. And the reason this spoke to me so loudly is because I have multiple sclerosis, MS. But I am very fortunate in the sense that I have a very easy case of it. I don't have any mobility issues. I don't have seizures. I don't have terrible headaches. I just have extreme heat sensitivity and I get tired really easily. Other than that, I am a relatively healthy person. But a lot of my very well-meaning friends and family members don't see me as Lainey. They don't see me as the geeky girl or the girl who's about to become a therapist or the girl who loves cats or the girl who loves makeup. They don't see me as a person. They see me as my illness. And that's offensive. Even when it's coming from a place of compassion, it's offensive. I am not my illness. 
So I can think of a lot of instances in the past where I've been hanging out with somebody who maybe I haven't seen in a while. I'm really excited to catch up. I want to know what's been going on in their life. I want to tell them about the exciting things that I've got on the horizon and all they want to do is ask me about MS. MS is such a boring topic. I am so sick of talking about it. So I'm here. I want to know who they're dating. I want to know how their job's going. I want to tell them about my stress over the licensure exam and all they want to do is say have you heard of this new pill for people with MS have you read this article have you tried this alternative therapy where people with MS sting themselves with honeybees and get better oh my gosh uh, when was your last MRI how often do you see the doctor are you tired how are you shut the fuck up let's just hang out out. And I know that these questions come from a place of genuine compassion. And I do appreciate the sentiment, annoying as it may be, but my peers are not my doctors. And speaking of compassion, an integral part of psychotherapy is to create a compassionate, accepting, non-judgmental environment where the client feels like it's safe and like it's okay to display vulnerability. Whether or not they choose to be vulnerable is up to them. You cannot force that. As a friend, you can reach for the same goal of creating a comfortable, compassionate environment. But in order to make your friend feel comfortable, you have to be comfortable. And what impedes your ability to be comfortable is usually an agenda. And if number one on your agenda is get my friend to talk, you're not going to create a comfortable, open, chill environment where you can just hang out and if the topic comes up, it will come up naturally and both people will communicate effectively. When you reek of agenda, your friend is going to smell it and it's going to make them really uneasy. I would recommend exactly what Katie recommended. Go into the situation and say, I'm so happy to see you. You know, I've been thinking about you a lot lately. How you doing? And if they are in the mood to talk, they will. If they are not ready to talk or if they're just not in the mood to talk, they won't. And that's okay. Don't take that personally and please don't push. Even if you feel like the pushing is coming from a place of compassion, even if you have heard stories about people that were struggling with something major but they weren't ready to face it and their friend pushed them to face it and it saved their life, yes, that does happen, but don't assume that that is the way it is for your friend. If your intention is to convey compassion and to provide help, that is so admirable. But be aware that it may not come across as compassion when your friend is not ready to talk about it. To them, it may feel like bullying. It may feel like an attack. And your compassionate intentions are valid. And your friend's perception that they are being bullied and attacked is equally valid. No person is right. No person is wrong. You're just on different pages. I also had a really strong reaction to what both women agreed on, saying that sometimes we just need somebody to be there, to just sit next to us, watch a movie with us, have dinner with us, just be there, even if we're not talking about anything serious. I get that. I think that that is true for a lot of people, but I want to speak up for the introverts. For an introvert, sometimes the kindest thing you can do for them is not be there. Give them their space. Leave them alone. It is not personal. I have a video in the works about introversion and extroversion. They are actually two ends of the same spectrum and it has to do with your baseline level of cortical arousal. Introverts recharge in solitude. Extroverts recharge or charge a little bit extra in the presence of other people. So that's another topic for another time. But if your friend is an introvert and they tell you that they just need some space, 
please respect that. I realize that if you are really worried that they might hurt themselves and they're asking for space and you suspect that they're they're wanting that space so that they can hurt themselves, I understand that that's a cause for concern, but if you know them well and you know that they are the type of person who tends to kind of retreat and recharge and then come back and hang out with you, please, please, please respect that. Now it's time for me to go ahead and venture into a topic that might create a little bit of mini controversy. So Eugenia has never openly talked about her specific disorder. She's talked about getting help and I think that she is so brave for doing that. I applaud her for doing that, but she has never labeled her disorder and that is okay. She's been very open about certain topics, but then she's been very vague about other topics and that is her right. I feel like we as mere mortal viewers sometimes forget that internet personalities or celebrities have a right to privacy. So we mere mortals are sitting on the toilet watching YouTube on our phones and we start to feel like we know this person. I mean, they're our dump buddy. You know, we're sitting there listening to their life story while we're taking a dump and we feel connected to them. We feel invested in the imaginary relationship that we have with them, which is very, very one-sided. It's what we call a parasocial relationship. You don't actually know this person. You don't have any kind of meaningful interaction with this person. Even if you've commented back and forth on the internet, this person is not really in your life. Again, it's a parasocial relationship. So there are possibly millions of people out there who are diagnosing Eugenia, even though they don't know her personally. And that really chaps my ass, both as a mental health professional and as a human being with respect for other human beings. So even as a therapist, you are not allowed to diagnose somebody until you have sat down in a private session, administered a battery of validated tests, and then you can diagnose. So stop it. Just stop it. It makes me so mad. Would I blow up the internet if I cried off my fake lashes and screamed, leave Eugenia alone? Probably not, but even I feel a little bit hypocritical right now because I'm sitting here making this video and I'm talking about two women that I don't know. I've watched their videos, but I don't know them personally. I'm not trying to make any assumptions. I'm just giving my own reactions. And you know what? I've already said some potentially inflammatory things. I don't feel like they are particularly inflammatory, but I mean, this is the internet. I could say that I dislike a lipstick and that could be inflammatory. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go down the rabbit hole and say some more potentially inflammatory things. I'm gonna pose a question to you. What if Eugenia were not young, thin, and pretty? Would there be this internet frenzy? What if she were an average looking girl, really active on social media, and maybe talking more openly about a specific disorder and actively asking for help? Would she get that help? Would she get any attention at all? I'm guessing, I could be wrong, I'm guessing that if she were an average looking girl talking about a disorder or seeming to struggle with a disorder that's not glamorized, and again, I want to be clear that we do not know which disorder or which disorders she is struggling with and it's not our business. But if she were just an average looking girl talking openly about something that is not glamorized, something like bipolar disorder or PTSD or anxiety, would she get attention? I'm guessing maybe a little bit, maybe she would get a couple of half-hearted 
hang in there, hope you get better comments. I also wonder how the internet would react if this were a really thin, attractive, very likable guy. How would you react? Would it be a joke? Would you care? Would you offer support? Would you try to pull a 5150 on this guy? Would we be concerned? And finally, are people truly concerned about Eugenia or is this an example of skinny shaming? Now I'm going to shift my focus and address the haters out there who are talking mad smack about Katie. Again, not trying to stand. Leave Katie alone! But I've already told you that Katie is one of my personal heroes. I admire her. I look up to her so much. I hope to one day have a channel that is similar to hers. Obviously, I will not copy her, but I want to move away from talking so much about makeup and fashion, even though I'll still talk about that a little bit because it's fun. But I want to eventually be focused more on mental health. So I think a lot of the smack talkers out there don't really understand how therapy works, or at least they don't understand therapy from an MFT approach. So Katie's an LMFT, as I will be soon, and the MFT approach, at least the modern MFT approach, is more of a collaborative effort. The therapist acts as a guide. We basically shine a spotlight on certain things and then the client takes from that what is salient to them. We are not there to fix the client. That's up to them. And most of us are taught from day one of grad school not to label feelings as bad or good. So for example, anger can keep things fair. Fear can keep you safe. Sometimes joy can get you in trouble. When you're really euphoric, maybe even manic, and you do something rash, it might be really fun, but it might get you in trouble. Man, I really want to watch Inside Out now, don't you? Now, behaviors can be adaptive or maladaptive. They can have pleasant or unpleasant consequences. And the consequences of behavior can get really tricky. When you're dealing with a behavior such as, for example, restrictive eating, and the consequences of that behavior are attention, popularity, maybe even fame. Think about that. But a therapist who would go into a session and make some of the horrible comments that a lot of people on the internet seem to think that Katie should have made to Eugenia. That therapist is a bad therapist. Obviously not an MFT. But let's be honest, people, especially people on the internet, just love to point out what's wrong with everybody else. And if I'm being honest, if I were to sit down and have a chat with these haters, I would probably say, okay, from your perspective, given your life experiences, I can understand why you felt that way. I can understand why you had that emotional reaction. And let's get something right. There is no such thing as being entitled to an emotion, or there is no such thing as being allowed to have a certain emotional reaction. There is no warrant for an emotion. They just are. And now seems like the perfect time to talk about one of my favorite topics in the realm of psychotherapy, validation. Validation is not the same thing as enabling. I will say that again. Validation is not the same thing as enabling. So when I was in my practicum, my nickname was The Validator. I wanted to get a t-shirt made that said The Validator on it. I felt like a superhero. So I was the therapist who was always saying, oh, I can understand why you wanted to punch that guy in the face. Oh, under the circumstances, I, I can understand why you wanted to cheat on your husband. That must have been really hard. You must have really struggled with that. I was not at any point saying, yeah, go punch that guy. 
Yeah, go fuck that other dude. I was just validating the client's experience and the clients seemed to really respond favorably to it. In fact, most of them demonstrated significant improvement from the beginning of therapy until the conclusion of therapy. So my personal approach is to validate the feeling, but then talk about how the client might alter the narrative and loosen the connection between the feeling and the maladaptive behavior. And finally, I want to point out that none of the videos in questions were therapy sessions. Now, Katie is an LMFT. She is a therapist, but she is not Eugenia's therapist. These videos were in formative videos intended to educate the public about mental health, about psychotherapy, about what it's like to experience a 5150, about how to get help for a friend who might be struggling, and about how to seek help for yourself if you are struggling. I think a lot of people out there were really hoping that Katie would just rip into Eugenia and call her crazy and call her names and diagnose her and send her to a mental institution and just basically they were hoping for a really dramatic video and that's not what they got. Personally, I thought it was awesome to hear the story from both perspectives, from the perspective of a mental health professional and from the perspective of someone who went into treatment kind of against her will, someone who went through a struggle, someone who is still going through a struggle. I thought it was great. I thought it was very respectful. I thought it was entirely appropriate. And I hope that somebody out there found comfort in what the women said. I hope somebody out there figured out a better way to approach a friend about whom they were concerned. And I hope that somebody out there found the motivation to seek help for themselves. I thought that all in all, it was a very positive message. Okay, I feel this video getting really long, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. There are other things that I could say, but I feel like I said what I wanted to say for this video. If you want to hear more thoughts from me, and I'm not assuming that you do, but if for some reason you do, just let me know and I'll do an additional video. But for now, that wraps it up. And keep in mind that I usually make makeup videos and fashion videos and cosplay videos and videos about crushes. So I'm really not used to talking about super controversial issues on the internet. However, I knew what I was getting into when I decided to make this video, so I am prepared. And I'll leave you with this. I am not commanding you, but I am encouraging you to approach your fellow human beings with compassion. Listen first, judge later, and try to listen without agenda. That is so hard. But the world would be a much more peaceful place if we could all listen without our own agenda and our own biases distorting our interpretation of what the other person is actually saying to us. So that does wrap it up for today. Thank you guys so very much for listening. And if you were hate watching this video, thank you for wasting your time on little old me. If you did like this video, follow me on Instagram. I will follow you back. Throw me a pity like, give me some encouragement to make some more videos. Consider subscribing, that'd be awesome. Very special shout out to you if you were watching this video on the toilet. And until next time, be sure to listen without agenda.